I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on our channel on data analytics and data transformation. And I hope that everyone is staying safe in these troubling times. This week, we're going to connect to SQL Server using VB.NET and ADO.NET and Configuration Manager. This is a follow-up video, which is the second in my advanced playlist um, that will follow up on our explanation on how to connect to an Oracle database. We're also going to connect to an SQL Server database to show A, that we can connect to both databases in one little procedure, and B, that we can put data from both databases into one data set, which is very useful for uh, data analytics and transformations and comparisons. Please like and subscribe if you like the content that you've seen on the channel and click the bell to make sure that you are notified whenever uh, new videos are put up. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is an application that we worked on in the previous video. So go, go ahead and go back and check that out. And in that video, we connected to an Oracle database to take some data and put it into our data set. So in this video, we're going to take the same file and add an SQL Server connection and take some data from SQL Server. So in the same way that we did last time, we're going to add a connection string for our SQL Server. And you can do that by going into the app config file that's attached to the project. And you can add a new uh, connection string in the connection string section, which is very important for you to put your connection strings in there uh, because uh, security wise and for a couple other reasons, it's just good practice. Um, you can also uh, encrypt the connection string section of the file so that other people can't read your uh, connection strings. And if anyone is interested in seeing a video on how to do that, uh, please comment in the comment section below. So just remember that it is not good practice to leave your connection string with your credentials and everything in your application code in the module. Okay, so I've completed my connection string and I can go ahead and move to my module. And as you can see, this is where we got data from Oracle and we loaded it into our data set and we've got our last command there, operation complete. And so we'll move that to the end and we'll add a comment to just show that we're going to start our SQL server extraction. And so uh, we're going to use a lot of the same things that we used for our Oracle uh, extraction. One of the first things is we're going to use our configuration manager um, to get our connection string uh, from the connection string section of our uh, config file and, so that it is extracted in a safe way and is usable for the application. As you can see, I called it SQL Server uh, database as the name of the connection string and so I can put that in and uh, get my connection string that way. The next thing is uh, we're going to create a connection object just like we did um, for, for the Oracle one except this time we're going to use SQL client instead of ODBC. Um, SQL client has a lot of really neat features uh, that are um, great when you're operating between Microsoft products. Um, and uh, uh, but you could also use ODBC if you wanted to to also use ODBC for uh, your SQL Server connection. But I find um, the SQL client um, uh, is quite a lot nicer to use. Okay, and then next we'll reuse our STR SQL string, and we'll change that to uh, select data um, my message field from our uh, database that's on SQL Server. And as you can see, the name of the uh, table is different, of course, than from on the Oracle database. And we can go ahead and we can create our own 
uh, data adapter in the same th way that we did for ODBC, except in this case we're going to use SQL Client. We'll create an SQL data adapter and we will uh, use the SQL string and the connection object that we created in order to um, create that adapter. And then we'll use that data adapter uh, to fill a table uh, in our existing data set and we'll give it a different name uh, from the TTMP Oracle message table that we created in that data set. And so what's cool about this is that you'll notice that now you have uh, data from two very different kinds of databases with different kinds of data types and all kinds of things like that in one data set in your application. And this is very important for integration purposes. So at this point we can go ahead and we'll reuse our data table object and we'll just point that at, at the table that we created called TTMP SQL Server Message. And that's going to allow us to take a look at what's inside that table. So from there, so from there we'll go ahead and reset our message string. And then from there we can create a for next loop and create a row object um, to allow us to look at the data in each row and we can load our message string uh, with the message field on each row. So here we are loading our message string and we'll say get the my message field on each row of, of the uh, table that we walk through and we can go ahead and I'll throw in a uh, a thread sleep uh, command in there so that it slows it down so you can see uh, in the output it'll slow it down a little bit so it looks nicer and then we can do a console.write line so that we can output the message that we found on each row so this is going to cycle through the uh, rows in the table just like it did in the oracle table above and it's going to output the message to our console. So I'll bring our operation complete back up to the uh, to the code there so it looks better. And I'll throw a, another message in here for the console just to say that we're starting our SQL server extraction. Um, so we can we'll be able to see where where the Oracle extraction started and where the SQL Server extraction started as well. And I'll grab a data retrieved uh, message just like we did on the Oracle loop and I'll put that in after our data adapter fills our table so that we know what's happening. Very useful if you've got a very large extraction. It's good to know when it started and finished. And I think that's probably pretty good for now so we can click the start on our on our toolbar or we can hit F5 on our keyboard and it'll build the application and it'll start it and then as you can see and as you can see it is retrieving data from both Oracle and SQL Server now and giving you messages in your console application. Now you have an application that can be scheduled if you wanted to integrate your Oracle and SQL Server data. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and if you have any questions or comments please put them in the comment section below or if you have anything that you would like to see on the channel please go ahead and put it in the comments and I'll see if I can accommodate. Good luck and until next time I'll catch you later.